Okay. So, I've just been playing the old SPI War of the Ring. And um, this game has always been such a disappointment for me. Um, it's one of the reasons that I was kind of reluctant about starting it, and I ended up kind of having a certain amount of enjoyment out of it. But the truth is, I've been. I ordered this thing, the deluxe designer edition from SPI. Uh, difficult choice. It was a little more expensive than most of the games I was purchasing, which were Avalon Hill ones at around 15 bucks a pop. This, I don't know if it was 20 or 25 with shipping or something. But it was definitely pushing higher than I wanted to pay per game in general. But what a subject, you know, the military uh, hull scope of, of the War of the Ring. Boy, did I want this thing. And I was so excited the day, I, I, I can even still remember, and I, you know, I must have been early teens here, the day I came home from school, one of the first days I walked home from school, for whatever reason, I took a shortcut. Now, normally walking home from school would take me maybe about an hour a little more than, somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour. The bus took me 45 minutes because it went way out of the way. Um, but I must have taken like two and a half hours walking home because I took a shortcut. Uh, we'll talk about my shortcuts some other time. But, and it really was. I mean, as the crow flies, it was a shortcut, but it was over terrible terrain, you know, through fields and all kind of stuff. And absolutely no shorter. But I got to avoid the road. Anyway, I come home, I'm like, you know, two hours later than my mom expects me, but I got this in the mail. And, oh boy, you know, I mean, the two things together became so linked, and I have this tremendous memory of unpacking this, looking at it. You know, I mean, total gamer orgasm thing here, right? <sighs> Played it a couple of times, and yeah, I mean, I was excited, excited the way that maybe I was about things like, uh, you know, some of the other games at the same time. War and Peace, for example. <sighs> but something felt wrong. It just didn't manage it. And it never really has. And here's the thing. There's two games to this. There's the character game, the simple version. And then there's the army game. And the character game, I felt, was the better of the two, sadly. You know, this broad-reaching army game, you see in the playing that I did how much it just drags down into nothing. I mean, there's no decisions, you're just sitting there rolling it out, and actually, there's no hope even, you know, in the game that I was playing. If it ties down to that level, there is nothing there. So, what it comes down to is, can the Fellowship slip the ring in? before uh, Mordor becomes impenetrable like it did. And if it does become impenetrable, instead of what happened, you have to bring kind of the whole party in uh, and hope to get them through. See, there's a dual problem here. One, you have the orcs, which it's really easy for the ring bearer to get by, but a big party has trouble with. And then you have the Nazgul, and it's really reasonable, a whole party, or a powerful party, can fight its way through the Nazgul, but what can get through the orcs probably can't. So if the mortal, if the dark power player is able to set everything up the way he wants it, um, it becomes very, very difficult for the fellowship player to get the ring into position to drop it. So what does that mean? Well, it means you might have to clear the orcs out using army combat, and I've seen that done. Or you might have to... You might be able to get the uh, whole fellowship party streaming into Mordor before the orcs are in enough strength to, stop, to capture a lot of them and make it up into Ordrin where they can fight uh, the Nazgul. Now, in this game, I was down a few strikes. The big one, leaving um, good old uh, Gandalf chained to the top of Isengard. That's a, a big hit. Uh, because Gandalf can go around, mobilize the, the, uh, the forces of Rohan and Gondor before, uh, before the... the Dark power player maybe gets to do much. 
and that's a strong advantage. Another possibility uh, would be, so I struck out to the north. Another possibility would have been to send someone like Aragorn up with Frodo to try to slip through that way. And that might have actually been fast enough on Shadowfax to get through. And that, that was one of the risks here that the Dark Power Player was taking. I chose instead to keep most of the party together. Keeping the whole party together is somewhat dangerous because you've got the Boromir aspect. Um, not that he can take the ring, but it's just painful to have happen and you'd rather it not. Uh, so I like to split the party when possible for that. But not having Gandalf was definitely a huge hit. So here's the thing. The character game I think is a little bit more fun because all the armies just don't add much to the game. And I have a bunch of different options here. Uh, expanded uh, Expansion to the three-player rules to make them a little bit more exciting. Uh, the PBM game, which is supposed to be actually uh, a Game Master three-player version. This Great Northern War with five players up to that all make this attempt to try to fix some problem that to me actually seems minor because when it comes down to it, it's actually how enjoyable is that army game. I don't care how balanced it is if it was any fun, but it's not fun. That's where it really cuts to me. So like something like Wizard, uh, like uh, Magic Run, which has been on my mind recently, was willing to tinker with and toy with because I believe that there's such a cool game in there it's just missing something and I still haven't quite gotten what that something is but I know that's worth tinkering with. This sucker it's missing fun. It's just not enjoyable. The character game is okay but it's tiny, very minor and it's not what I paid them at that time big money for. You know what is worth it though? Another game I covered a while back, dig through my stuff, uh, Fellowship of the Ring, the old Iron Crown Enterprises one. That blows away this character game uh, completely. Gets this level of tension and uncertainty on both sides that becomes sort of like a game of Bismarck or Midway where you're like hunting a battleship type thing where you're searching for your opponent and all this other aspects in it with the double blind movement that just works really great. Here, no, you don't have that. You got this big stack of fellowship pieces that could split off, but you know exactly where they might be. And then you just throw your, uh, you know, your, your Nazgul in against them and hope you get a search and whatever. And all of that, you know, I say, hey, the character game's better. Well, the character game's still not all that good, right? I mean, there's this, oh, did I find him? Did I find him? Did he get a special card that let him through? That's all there is to it. There's none of the suspense that's in the other Fellowship game. You move to the Army game, and I played the character game first, actually, because I was young enough not to be overconfident, thinking I can figure out a game right away. Well... You move to the army game and it doesn't feel any better than the character game. In fact, it feels like I'm moving all these armies around for no purpose at all. They're just making the character game more annoying and painful than it originally was. Now, one thing that came to my mind, the, uh, there's what, Fantasy Flight Games or whatever. Uh, I look on Board Game Geek and supposedly it's a re-implementation of this. <sighs> That's got to be wrong. I mean, there's no way, I cannot think of a way that this base game could have been changed into something that is as popular and as mainstream as the FFG game appears to be. I've never played it, I've only seen it and looked at it very briefly, but I cannot imagine how this sucker could be quoted as being, you know, in the direct line. It could be in the sense of, you know, I don't know, when I start saying things like, oh, For the People is kind of like the old Victory Games, you know, Civil War, it's got to be a bigger divergence than that, you know? I mean, it's just, this game is not something that would be at all attractive, I think, to 
the type of player that I think is attractive. And I, I know someone who loves the um, Fantasy Flight version. Um, I can't imagine him really liking this. Of course, he also likes. Uh, <laughs> he also liked uh, After the Holocaust. So I don't know. Maybe maybe the theme's enough for him. But I can't imagine the popularity that that game has and the and the and the broad appeal having much at all to do with this stuff. Um, a little bit on the components. Hey, you know, mostly it's an SPI standard version. I'll tell you one thing. These. Uh, Mounted hard maps, <sighs> they don't do it for me still. Uh, I, I think I prefer, and I actually have the paper map. Um, I picked up a partial version of this. Because this thing, it just doesn't match together perfectly. It ends up jostling and bouncing and not being in position. One kind of nice thing, player read cards. Uh, the little player cards, I've got somewhere in a bag. Kind of a problem here, they get marked, uh, damaged very easily, they the tear apart from a sheet paper SPI cards. That was, uh, that's a shame. Um, my copy, it's possible to tell what's what among the Servants of Sauron, for example. And I think that's kind of a sad aspect of it. I'm not going to be able to fit my cards in here with these big thick boards. Uh, Nice pile of counters. Countermix probably isn't as usefully designed as it could be. There's lots and lots of little numbered orcs, which are important in the character game, but not to that quantity. But not a lot of conglomerate pieces. And you end up with these huge stacks. Uh, and then, for me, my mental state says, Ah, oh, this one's a specific. You know, These are the Mirkwood orcs. I don't want to turn them into just a 54 arc counter. So I don't know. Uh, that's kind of a painful, painful situation. But outside of my own personal little foible there, I still would rather see like, you know, some 100 counters. Um, also, some of the things like the uh, Gondor and Rohan units end up in a huge stacks that aren't easily conglomerate. The units that come, the 20s, 15s, 10s, there's nothing bigger than them in the counter mix over here, the, the generic counter mix. That's kind of a problem. Same with the elves, same with the dwarves. So um, you end up with bigger stacks than maybe you particularly like, and there's no off bar uh, areas to keep things in a leader box or anything like that, which is kind of a shame as well. Anyway, overall, Big disappointment of a game, always has been. Uh, I know some people really loved this sucker, but I could never get into it. Uh, theme and all, I was gung-ho for it. I love War of the Ring. I, I was a big fan of the Rollmaster, uh, Middle Earth stuff. The real Rollmaster, not just the Middle Earth roleplay. But I had all those books, ended up selling them because I wasn't going to play it again, I thought. Now I regret that, because they were a great resource. But uh, this this just never got the flavor for me. I'm glad some people can still enjoy it, but it doesn't do it for me, I'm afraid.